Tonight on a black show, the NRA is trying to play us. A young woman's high school prank brings backlash when folks finally understand said prank. And I sit down with Cleveland show alum, actress, director, and hardcore tweeter, Reagan Gomez to talk about all sorts of things. All of that plus quick hits on tonight's A Black Show. What is the composition of a black show? In and of itself, that ass so Many questions infinitely bending and eventually breaking rules that define the status quo. Taking looks, drilling down in books, how far does it go? Turn it up and listen while we examine the facts, though. Strap with a heavyweight that make the screens crack, bro. Misunderstanding the last line is exactly why this show should be your pastime. Prime time, exacto. Open up your mind, time. Team Black got our mean track record of being nice when tracking records on a media device, second to none. The docket is about a rocket on course to explode. With reasonable mind force plus fun We just begun Discussions over what should be done It's your choice, it's your voice Say it loud and don't fall back, yo This is your time to define It's a black show What's going on, folks? We are back. This is a black show, and I am your host, Elon James White. This is week five of a black show, and I haven't set anything or anyone on fire, so I think it's time for us to clap for me at this point. I mean, yay, because I assure you, running this program with the rest of Twib Nation, I mean, we have all sorts of podcasts and stuff, can be a little bit stressful, but the feedback that you guys are giving and the support you're showing makes it all worth it. So let's get this awesome train of magic moving, okay? Let's go. Have you ever seen one of those commercials for like a big brand corporate McBurger in a box type thing during a show like Scrubs or Friends or Big Bang Theory? And they'd have some white group of people craving a McBurger in a box and then they'd smile and joke and then boom, now we have a commercial. But then you'd go watch something that had, let's say, a black audience. Then all of a sudden, it'd be like Keith Sweat-style R&B song about McNuggets. I woke up and found you creeping. Oh, girl, I know your secret. You dipping on me. Got that McNuggets loving. You went to McDonald's. It just ain't fair. Why can't you share your love with me? Negroes need to have things advertised in a Negro fashion. Crispy chicken, fresh lettuce, three cheeses, fresh dressing, wrapped up in a tasty flour tortilla. Just making commercials that, I don't know, maybe was just inclusive and had multiple types of folks. No, let's make it black. Blackity, blackity, black. All of the black. This was annoying because repackaging aspects of our culture to convince us to jump on your problematic corporate dick isn't really speaking to our community. Hot beats and stereotypes, not always the best way of selling your product, you know? Speaking of problematic dicks. Next week, we're gonna cover everything we wish the gun industry was doing, but is Why the hell do I have to call up a guy to Cerakote my gun like I'm making some back alley drug deal? I can get on Nike.com right now and make a pair of shoes with more colors than the colors of Benetton ad. And how is it possible for me to walk out of a gun store with a $5,000 rifle in a cardboard box? No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Literally in a cardboard box. Yeah, in a cardboard box. And it pissed me off, too, because it's like, I want a nice box. I don't want the Build-A-Bear beginning set of a homeless guy's apartment. But the gun world didn't come from nowhere. There's a heritage. A heritage that had a swag that would put most rappers to shame. Instead, we'll talk about how things like Google Glass make filming your next world star moment that much cooler. Um, what the giant sh- ball f- was that? That's rude, I'm, I, I'm being rude, I'm sorry. He's another black host of a project. I should give him more respect. You guys, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I have to say this because it's kind of been eating at me a little bit, yeah. but of all the women on the planet, we get stuck with her as being the potential first female president of the United States. Why does that bother you? Because she's very uninspiring. And not to mention the fact that it's pretty blatant that Hillary is no longer sleeping with Bill Clinton. Because if she were, he would inform her that this whole gun issue thing and trying to walk this elusive line of yeah. gun control but still for the Second Amendment rights right. is probably not the smartest thing to do. What the giant sh- ball f- was that, sir? The guy hosting that show is a gun dude and he's been floating around the web for now a few years. But this repackaging of such a ridiculous message is, I mean, <sighs> listen, 
I'm not going to say whether or not this nonsense is working because I don't know. I mean, millennials as a whole are pretty pro stricter gun laws, so there's that, but fetishizing guns isn't the way to change gun culture within communities of color and young folks. This dude is mad that guns don't come in more colors. Where I grew up, you could get shot carrying a neon water gun when guns are known for being dark and black. And you're pissed that you can't get more color options? Are you shitting me? Please, stop crispy chickening us. You want to engage younger folks in communities of color around guns? Talk to us like we're goddamn adults and not simply sheep for you to shuck and jive at. Damn it, now I'm humming those damn chicken songs that I played earlier. While I try to get this out of my head, why don't we do a little bit of a politrickin? County Georgia senior Paris Gray found herself in big trouble for her yearbook quote using the elements it translates to back that ass up. Despite the fact that no adults or editors noticed the hidden meaning, when administrators were made aware of the quote, Gray got an in-school suspension, was not allowed to participate in the senior walk, and was no longer able to give the inspirational speech at graduation. When I first heard about Paris Gray being barred from graduation for her clever yearbook quote, I was confused because I've never memorized the periodic table and I needed to go to Wikipedia. You know what, when I first heard about Paris Gray, the high school senior who got in trouble for writing Back That Ass Up um, in her yearbook, I thought to myself, this girl's amazing. After all, she managed to combine chemistry with juvenile. Girl, you're working with some ass here. Go to class, yeah. Science and juvenile? Girl, you want to graduate? Yeah, now you're late? Yeah. Well, listen, you need to be giving her some kind of award because that, that girl is amazing. I seriously think Barack Obama should award her a Medal of Freedom. Can everyone just calm down? She's like the MLK of yearbook quotes. Girl, you got detention now. It's suspension now. Okay, people were actually mad that a high school senior wrote in code in her yearbook so the adults wouldn't get it. Um, it was actually genius. We all did it. I did it. Girl, you act the hood. Why don't you back that class up? In terms of senior pranks, this is as harmless as it gets. Tap a keg. Wow. There's some genius right there. Fooled everybody, apparently. She's like the Neil deGrasse Tyson of backing that ass up. And you know what happened to me? Nothing. Nothing happened to me. Perhaps the school realized they were overreacting because they're allowing Gray to walk with her class and give her graduation speech at the ceremony. I'm a fan of you, Paris. I am a fan. You guys must be so proud. I am, you know, I'm just glad we're able to do our own thing and, you know, bring back some good music. No, I hear you. And I know the people are just going to love it. We sure hope so. I'm from Pasadena and we don't run from a challenge. We run to it. All right now. What's going on, folks? We're back and this is Elon James White and I am joined by, I, I'm not even sure how to uh, set this up properly because in my brain, my 14 year old self is very confused as to what's happening because <laughs> Because I'm talking to someone who I was watching on TV, and I was confused. Like, I was like, it was like, like when you, when you, when I talk about my youth, like these are one of the names that would pop up in my youth. And all of a sudden, I'm having a conversation with her. So this is a little bit hard for me. I'll, I'll try to get through it. But uh, Reagan Gobez, ma'am, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you for having me. And you know what, Elon? We are both old. We're not 14 years old anymore. We're, we're old as I don't know what, but it's very nice. I'm happy to be on your show. <laughs> yes, no, no I, I, obviously we, we, are, we, are, we are old people now, um, but uh, I, I feel older uh, than, than everything. But <laughs> thank you so much for uh, doing the show. It's very much appreciated. Uh, one of the way that uh, we've, I've, I've been engaging uh, with you is that you're, you're very, very heavily uh, into Twitter. Like, yeah. so in a sense that, like, in a way that, like, is, is, is matched by few. And I'm someone who's pretty heavy on Twitter. You and, are, you are, you definitely are, yes. But you match my Twitter game, like, 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 tweet for tweet almost. Uh, I might, I might, and you know what? I might even tweet a little bit more than you. Yeah, um, it's, yeah. it, 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 it's really crazy because I got on Twitter. Um, I kind of cut you off. Can I go on and talk about no, how you, I you got can on Twitter? Talk about it, ma'am. 
Okay, because I could really talk about Twitter all day, all day. And it's really strange because I've been on Twitter since 2009. And like everyone, um, I was kind of like, what is this thing? I just come off of MySpace. I just had my daughter, so I didn't have the time to dedicate to MySpace like I used to. So I heard about Twitter. And I, when I got on, I was kind of like, what is this? What am I supposed to talk about? And then once I figured it out, it's like I just hit the ground running. And it's really interesting how my relationship with Twitter has kind of evolved over the years like I'm even more into it now five years later than I was at the beginning Twitter is a little different now than it was back then but it, it, I really can't even imagine my life without Twitter which is I don't know how that sounds like it might even be like my third maybe my fourth or fifth kid like <laughs> I, and I don't even know how that sounds but it's just so important to my life and not even just uh, uh, as far as career wise because you know I'm, I'm doing my web series I'm producing more and actually the first independent projects that I project that I did uh, I met the director um, of that uh, project that was a short film called this time I met him on Twitter we were talking about Black Hollywood and what Black Hollywood needs to do to get his shit together. But it's there's so many different things that I talk about on Twitter. Uh, being a mom, I was pregnant with my son on Twitter. Uh, being, you know, an actress who has grown up in the business. And now what I'm going through as far as being a black actress in Hollywood now, um, my kids being married so young. I like talking about ratchet reality TV on Twitter, politics. I mean, it's, it's, it's so important um, to my life and I think to yours and everyone else's. And even we didn't know how big it was going to be when we even got on Twitter. And even as big as we think it is now, I can only imagine how it's going to continue to grow. Um, we've made, I've made incredible relationships on Twitter, including, you know, meeting you. I've never met you in person, but I feel like we know each other. And then there's so many other, you know, people on Twitter that I have that kind of same connection with. Um, I I could even say that Twitter, particularly black, black Twitter has really been an integral part in me being exposed to feminism, particularly black feminism. Um, I'm 34 now. I was 29 when I got on Twitter. Um, and, it, you know, just being able to meet different people and see different points of view. It's it's really, really been interesting. It's kind of like college in a way, I guess, except on Twitter, you can block people. You can't block people in college. But it's really, really interesting how uh, my relationship has kind of evolved with Twitter and it's in, it, like and uh, it, it is interesting and I I find it uh interesting the fact that you when you say that you uh, you've jumped in you have you've jumped in head first like like you are like like directly in conversations with uh folks all across the board and it's funny because as like you said you're in the business as an actress you've been in a business for what 20 years now like like yeah like, yeah 20 not 94 yeah 20 years yeah right and so so you you're in the business but you're yet you're still disconnected to this space and you've actually start you've you talk about things that a lot of times I wouldn't expect out of, I guess, uh, uh, people who are in the business uh, as, as, as at least at the same level as you, like uh, with the same amount of, uh, of uh, success that you've had, yet you'll still go in and you'll go in at somebody or you'll go yeah. in and talk about something that I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> think she would step on that, but she will. Well, you're so sweet. Now, I'm not on Holly Berry's level or anything. I think you're making me a little bigger than what I am. But I think it, it did help that when I got on Twitter, I was on um, a Seth MacFarlane show. I was on the Cleveland show. Um, and, you know, we, you know, Seth MacFarlane shows, they're very totally inappropriate. So it wasn't like people were going to call up my boss and say, Reagan's talking about whatever inappropriate topic. I mean, my boss is inappropriate already. So I think it kind of helped that I wasn't on like kind of a serious show where my producer or the network would be nervous about what I was going to say. And also, I didn't ask anybody's permission to get on Twitter. I don't ask anybody's permission now to get on Twitter, regardless of whatever job I have. Um, and I don't need permission to say what it is I want to say. Whatever I'm saying is about me. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, whatever show that I'm on. You know, this is kind of my thing. And I think because, you know, there wasn't, I guess I wasn't on a big, huge show and I wasn't there weren't a lot of um I didn't have that pressure from network or whatever to kind of watch what I say nobody was really caring what I was doing and I think that made it better for me 
Um, cause I can, and I still can talk about whatever it is that, that I want to talk about. So and I love hopefully, the fact that you, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll remain that way, which I think it will. Um, but I love the fact yeah. that you said that, like, it's like, I, I wasn't really on a big show, you know, like just a Cleveland show or whatever. Like, yes, all of you have watched my show and all that. It wasn't nothing, anything big or anything <laughs> like that, you know? So, and, and it was a cartoon. So you didn't necessarily see my face. Whereas if it was a show where like I was the star of it or something, everyone would know that was me. And there would be a lot more pressure, I guess, from network or whatever if I did say something controversial or stupid or whatever I can kind of get away with that at, at least at the beginning um, whereas you know what I mean if I'm the star of a show right. and you see my face there you know it, it wouldn't be that easy and so it's funny you talk about that uh, you're now even more connected to Twitter now than you were even in the beginning but I'm like ma'am don't you know how toxic Twitter is um, you don't you don't know about it's, that it's, oh my it's so f- Anno- can we curse but it's so it's so damn annoying like people who write all those damn articles on you know the hash tw- hashtag twitter uh, uh activism and twitter is so toxic it's like you don't know what the hell you're doing you don't know what you're doing and if you think twitter is so toxic why the hell are you on it writing these you know stories that you post on twitter give me a break what, what that means is twitter is toxic is that there are too many black and brown people talking amongst themselves and when you try to butt in we tell you to shut up if you don't know what you're talking about and now all of a sudden it's toxic it's like well get off bye <laughs> get off what I, the I, 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 it's funny because they're, they're like we are going to get off and I, I find it I think that they're getting off because of the fact that they're just annoyed with all the voices they now have to listen to that they right. didn't have to listen to before right so, so right. now so now it's like well now this is not really that important because I will get yelled at when I say something dumb exactly and people want to act like Twitter is so it's not important it's this and that listen Twitter we have sparked movements on Twitter even with the, the the latest bring back our girls that was started on Twitter you know and even with you know the confusion at the beginning as far as who started the hashtag and all that you know the woman who claimed to have started the hashtag obviously black Twitter found her and we drug her ass because <laughs> she didn't start the hashtag it's like no you know this is our thing and obviously when Twitter was started it wasn't meant for us but we have taken over and we're not gonna shut up we're not gonna shut up so now what we'll have more with Ray and Gomez a little bit later but up next why don't we look at the latest in news on quick hits a national review online contributor who goes by the name of AJ Delgado thinks that women are being brainwashed into thinking they've been raped. She claims that um, she blames liberals for loosening the definition of sexual assault to include, quote, any sexual activity in which the women is not, the woman is not sober. She goes on to say, admittedly, I am no scientist, but I'm fairly certain that a, st- a statistically significant amount of sex, including very enjoyable sex, happens under the influence of alcohol. But by the liberal definition of my generation, I've been raped multiple times. She goes on to cite a personal anecdote to make her point, arguing that for a friend, quote, Convincing herself she had been raped was a way of saving her dignity and avoiding the hurtful reality of regrettable sex, close quote. She goes on to say that for every legitimate actual rape claim, there may be another girl that was not a girl who cried rape. Wow. I, you can't, you can't actually, you can't, you can't actually write those words, can you, and be considered a reasonable person? That's like, Aaron, you can't, you can't do that. I, I don't I, I'm assuming that she's running for the for, I, I'm assuming that she's a secretly men's rights advocate or something like that because that's that's the that's the Twitter troll argument about rape that's the discussion that goes back and forth between guys being jerks on social media I didn't know that that I, she's trolling right There's, she's didn't I mean, mean all, any of this right? here's the problem with this it's because I feel as if sometimes uh certain aspects certain part people on the right will go after ideas or or or, or just uh just uh certain sentiments because it is something that is spoken about a lot on the left and that's it it's not because it's actually something that they even sometimes genuinely believe sometimes they really do believe this nonsense and just she might but like sometimes they're doing it just because like they, they hear the left say it enough and if the left says it obviously it's wrong and so Amani, i mean like how do you like w- w- why is it that 
having women speak up because what what this woman's not acknowledging is that women have been drugged P women have been actively uh have, have had folks basically try to get them drunk in order to take advantage of them it's so much of a problem that it's a trope within like humorous uh tv shows sitcoms stuff like that oh let's get her drunk because then she'll uh she'll sleep with me when under normal circumstances she would never do that that is not okay you are actually you know that her normal her normal mind would never allow this rape to, uh, i mean this, this sex to happen you then try to ply her with alcohol and so that you can convince so her mind is different or that she, maybe she's just out of it and she won't she just won't say no as opposed to saying yes that is in fact that is rape yeah yeah i mean i have a couple of things to say about this one this woman is full of crap She's absolutely full of crap. She is she is a product of rape culture. Um, she is making claims that are provably false. Um, there are studies. There was a study that was done in the United Kingdom of um, false allegations of rape. And what that study concluded over over a course of 17 months, the Crown Prosecutor in the UK studied these claims. And what he found and issued a report on and was March of 2013 is that 0.6 percent of, alleg of allegations of rape turn out to be false. 0.6%. That's almost nothing. Now, admittedly, you know, that study was done in the UK, but even assuming that American women somehow cry rape at, at levels far greater than the UK, it is still going to be practically nothing. So this claim that women are out there crying rape is, is provably false. Now, that is not to say that there are cases where a woman will will make a rape allegation that turns out to be false. But the problem with the problem with with focusing on that is that it tends to overwhelm any concern about the women who are actually raped and women who are raped and are fearful of coming forward and making these claims because the justice system, society, campuses, school campuses treat them like crap. The the second thing that I want to point out is I honestly believe that this backlash, this backlash against um, uh, this backlash against uh, about uh, victims of rape and sexual assault. I honestly believe it's because President Obama has just in initiated this new program that is set to deal with campus sexual assault. And then you have this woman from the NRO writing about oh, how ladies cry and rape and it's nothing. She went on Hannity last night to make the same claim. I think that there are conservatives that are so opposed to President Obama and anything that President Obama does that they're now willing to to basically take a crack at the 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 overwhelming number of sexual assault victims, sexual assault survivors, just to go ahead and cut the knees off from President Obama. I honestly think that that's the case. I mean, I mean, that's that's how I I, I, I brought this up uh, into this uh, conversation that I do believe that sometimes uh, just if, if they're angry enough, then that means that they, you know what, I don't need to uh, um, um, actually, this doesn't, I, I don't care about the victims of it. Uh, you guys like it, that, that guy's promoting it, then suddenly, you know what, it has to be bad. Mm -hmm. And what do you say, Aaron? You can be angry enough at the president to negate the validity of rape. Yes. Yes. I mean, they, they've turned it into a partisan issue. This idea that bl liberals have loosened the definition of sexual assault. Liberals. Like, uh, what, I mean, what, what, what is going through your mind that you turn something like rape, which has been, it's been a scourge of society since the dawn of time, and now you're turning it into an issue of, of liberals versus conservatives? Like, what are you are you smoking that Rob Ford? I don't understand. And let's also just have a moment to uh, to acknowledge that yes, there are times where you can in fact be intoxicated and you can have sex. And you know what? It's okay because that's what you like and you're like, yeah, I, I, I was I was okay with that. I was okay to put myself in that situation. Uh, but if you did not want that sex and you like like it's like when I say that it's like it's a common comedy trope, it like like just watch almost any sitcom. Uh like I, and you can even watch sitcoms now like on the Big Bang Theory, the character of Hollywood. Howard Wolowitz. That dude was rapey as all get out. Mm -hmm. And it was considered funny or, 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 or cute. Like, haha, oh, Howard's trying to get some sex just because he's pathetic, but he would do anything necessary to do so. It's a part of our, like, the fabric of our society. And I think that's part of the issue as well, because, because it's a part of our fabric of our society. Uh, the idea of saying, hey, you know that thing that everyone's been doing around and we've been kind of making jokes about and it's been, like, considered kind of okay for all these years? Yeah, it's really not okay. And you shouldn't allow that and you know what people should in fact speak up when they are in situations where they did not want to do that and then they were taken advantage of and i think people are just really uncomfortable with it 
Yeah. And you know what? You know what? Get over yourselves. <laughs> the fact is, people, we, we're not going to stop talking about it that way. And women are going to continue to be empowered to speak on it. But at the same time, you know, be, the more empowered women are to speak on this, the more viciously attacked the whole space and the conversation has to be by anyone who doesn't believe in anything liberals say. So, I mean, yay, Republicans. I, uh, I, 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 you guys are... You guys are champions of the, I don't know what you people are. You're, you're and, sad. But, and, and, and Aaron brought up a good point. It's not just liberals or Republicans. It's, there are a lot of liberals, people who style themselves as progressives, who are these men's rights activists who think that, you know, women are just these feminism, it's extreme feminism and these feminazis and they're making it hard for me to get laid. And so you've got these MRAs who literally troll women on social media, on Twitter, making arguments about, about, you know, that one lady who cried rape and she just didn't want to tell her daddy that she'd had sex before she was supposed to. I mean, it's not, it is not a partisan issue. It's a human issue. And I just, I, I, can we burn stuff now? So so far, you you you've uh, referred to Twitter as like as this place where like uh, being a, a, a part of the business that you, so obviously you're on it and you can talk about that and, and promote pr- products. Then you uh, or or uh, projects. Then you talk about it from the perspective of a community that that gets built. But you also mention it from the perspective of that. Like you said, you've learned a lot on Twitter. Like yeah. when you specifically when you talk about Black feminism. Like could you could you talk about that? I mean, listen, my just just a little b- backstory. Um, my I'm from uh, Detroit, Michigan, and my mother was a, um, a police officer with the Detroit P- PD. She was one of the first black uh, women, black Hispanic women um, to ride motorcycles in the Detroit PD. And she wound up suing the city for sexual harassment, sexual and racial harassment. And this was in the 80s. Um, and no feminist organization would help her. And the NAACP didn't even help her. So and she wound up winning by herself. And since then, we, we had to move to Philly, but that's who I come from. So even growing up, I'm, 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 I knew that I'd say in my early twenties, I kind of, I didn't really know what feminism was like everyone who's kind of ignorant to feminism. You just think it's about hating men or whatever. And as I started following more, uh, feminists and black feminists on Twitter, I really started learning a whole lot more. Um, And now that I've been following them and doing my own research, uh, it's like I'm a proud feminist and I'm a proud black feminist. Um, I have a black daughter, you know, and even teaching her and my son about, you know, equal rights. And it's so much more to it than that. But I really feel like um, my life and my experience as a black woman has really been enriched since I've been following these amazing women and even men like you who are also, you know, feminists and you know what what the struggle is and what black women go through. So it's it's really been interesting. And I, I think that's one of probably some of my best experiences on Twitter has been, you know, learning about black feminism and representing for black feminists. And even when it comes to feminism in general, um, making sure that the voices of black feminists and feminists of color are heard and we're not just kind of pushed to the sidelines and, You know, even with some of these other hashtags that like Muslim feminists have been doing and Asian feminists and, and, you know, women of color in general are really making their voices heard on Twitter. And I think it's it's I'm just so blessed that I've been able to be a small part of it. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, for doing this. Uh, And Almost Home uh, season two is being uh, taped now and uh, it'll be available. It'll be on uh, online shortly. Yes. On my YouTube channel, Reagan Gomez. Subscribe. Excellent, ma'am. Thank you. All right, folks, that wraps it up for yet another episode of A Black Show. Make sure you send your feedback into a black show at freespeech.org. That is a black show at freespeech.org. We might even start reading some on air. Thank you guys for watching once again. Have a pleasant evening. Yeah, yeah, huh, huh, huh.